Raven's flock, the flock rundown is the place to be. My man Ryan has been a lifelong Ravens fan since he was born. The flock rundown. Nothing gets better than waking up and wondering how high we can fly. Tune in. Motionless brain waves attempt to swim their way to sense can't tame the untamed. Appreciate you, Ray. What's up, Ravens fans? My name is Ryan, and welcome back to another episode of the Flock Rundown. So the practice report today, not looking great. Ronnie Stanley out, Salah out, Kyle Van Noy out, Nate Wiggins out, Jalen Armour Davis out, Kyle Hamilton out. Now Harbaugh touched on Ronnie and said that he will play Sunday, so can put our minds at ease there. Kyle Hamilton injury, I brought that up in the last episode, also posted the video that I found when I was watching film of him favoring that right shoulder when he missed that tackle and just that he just didn't look the same. So I'm going to guess that this day off or whatever's going on is related to that. Jeff Zarebeck ended up getting involved in the comments on that video that I posted. And he said, yeah, I believe I tweeted it after this play too, because I noticed the same. His right shoulder was hanging a bit. Didn't miss a snap, but not sure he looked like himself either. He went on to say, this seems like it's been one thing after another with him since about midway through camp. Went down awkwardly with the knee issue early in camp. Missed about two practices. Came back and was shaken up again in joint practices with the Packers. Now this, credit to him that he's playing through it. And then someone said, would he become a liability essentially? And Jeff said... It's a fair question. I don't think he's been a liability. He still takes stuff away, but definitely something to watch because you were right. I saw that that interaction also made the vault this morning and they were talking about it. Twitter account had put up a play of Kyle that, you know, he, he was where he needed to be and kind of made the play, but just didn't look right and seemed to grab his shoulder after the play. And uh, they kind of asked Jeff about it. And Jeff says, yeah, I believe I tweeted it after this play too, because I noticed the same. His right shoulder was hanging a bit. He didn't miss a snap, but not sure he looked like himself either. He is playing through something. That's the reason he's missing practice right now. Harbaugh didn't comment on the severity of anything. He said the injury report's going to come out. You don't get a lot of information midseason because teams are trying to keep things under wraps. I'm sure he's going to tough it out and be out there Sunday. And I don't think he's a liability yet. Now, if that injury worsens and he can barely tackle or something, then we have a different story. But... As of right now, I watched the whole game of just Kyle Hamilton after I saw that injury. And I was watching the secondary when I saw that injury originally. I was watching what happened in the secondary and like why they melted down, essentially. And it really came down to a bunch of contested catches. But uh, anyway, I noticed that Kyle Hamilton play, so I went back and watched just Kyle Hamilton every snap the whole game. And he did have a lot of plays where he was flying to the ball, being physical. I just noticed him kind of stepping off the gas a little bit more than he usually does. We can't really afford a Kyle Hamilton injury, so it is concerning. There's no doubt about it. I'm not feeling great that he's banged up and not playing to his full potential. That that That's not ideal for this Ravens secondary who hasn't looked great to start the year, but I do think that they will get back on track. I think there's a lot of reason to be optimistic about the secondary and just this defense as a whole. I mean, they're insanely talented for one. And Mike McDonald had some growing pains his first couple games, too. We were ranked almost dead last in pass defense for Mike McDonald's first couple games. And now Zach Orr's kind of having a similar experience. We're incredible stopping the run. And we're having a lot of meltdowns and miscommunications and uh, just some inconsistent secondary play, to use Harbaugh's main word right now. The Ravens are inconsistent and I think that that secondary will get back on track, though. I'm not worried. But we do have another elite wide receiver on deck this Sunday versus the Cowboys, so definitely something to watch. Hopefully that secondary tightens up a little bit this week. Moving on to something that's a bit more positive, Marshall Yonda and Terrell Suggs are officially nominated for the Hall of Fame, and it does bring up the question, are both of them going to be first ballot? Are either of them going to be first ballot? Are neither of them going to be first ballot? I think it's a true debate. If I had to just guess right now, or if I was a betting man on this situation, I think I would pick Suggs to be first ballot. First of all, let me say they're both deserving of being first ballot, but just knowing how hard it is to be a first ballot Hall of Famer 
and Marshall Yonda being a guard, they usually don't get quite as much love as other positions. And even on the line, I feel like tackles probably get the most love. So a guard is not very often a first ballot Hall of Famer. So I'm going to lean towards Suggs being that. I mean, two-time Super Bowl champion, defensive player of the year, defensive rookie of the year. He's just had an insane resume, insane career. Marshall Yonda also has had an incredible career. I just feel like he's probably not going to get voted first ballot, but I hope they both do. I think they're both deserving of first ballot for sure. There's no doubt in my mind. Lamar Jackson spoke to the media today as well and had a lot of positivity. He called today the best practice of the season and that the team's all optimistic, nobody's blaming each other, and it is only week three, you know, I I, I know the, the world's not burning as much as it seems like it might be, but I love what Lamar Jackson had to say today, got me fired up for this week against the Cowboys, the entire season is still in front of us, it's not over, it's not a dumpster fire, there's definitely some holes that we need to fix, but uh, I think it's correctable, and Lamar seems to have that same attitude. We're starting the season off slow, but I believe guys in the locker room, we know what we want to do, you know, when we go out there Sunday and we know we, we've we been busting our behinds uh, each and every game. It's like we're we coming up short, but I feel like we, at the end of the day, we beat ourselves in some in somewhat, you know, because it's penalties killing us. Uh, the Emmys we, we doing, you know, even me, you know, making little missed throws. We just got to fix those little things, and I feel like we're going to win our games. We had one of the best days we done had in, in practice, you know, um, this season today, and it, it starts in practice, you know. Um, I believe we just keep going on the right track. We're going to come out victorious. Maybe Lamar Jackson's feeling so good because he's 20-1 and one against NFC opponents and also didn't know he's never played in Dallas. I mean, I guess it makes sense, but I heard that in his presser today. He has never played at Cowboys Stadium, and he was drafted there in 2018, so he's been there, but he's never played a football game there, so that would be a pretty cool moment. And this should be a great game. I'm going to have the game preview episode where we're diving into all the details of the matchups on both sides of the ball. I have that out on Friday. But I'm excited for this one. Two talented teams. We're on the road. It's kind of a primetime game in a way, you know, 430. Tom Brady's doing the broadcast. It's definitely going to be a lot of people watching this game. And both teams coming off a loss, so who's going to rebound? Baltimore kind of has to rebound. 0-3 sounds like a nightmare. So this is kind of a must win. I know it's technically not a must win, but I'm going to call it a must win. And it seems like the players kind of understand that. I think just based off the way Lamar was talking about the team, his attitude and spirit and his energy, I feel like they know what's at stake. I am hopeful that there'll be some kind of offensive line changes. I don't expect them, but I'm hopeful that the offensive line at least improves if you're not going to change the personnel, then they got to get a lot better quick because they're going to have their hands full Sunday with the Cowboys defensive line. I just think that the Ravens have a lot else going for them too. And it's really not all doom and gloom. There needs to be some kind of positivity and optimism in the fan base. A lot of people are freaking out right now and I get it, man. 0-2 sucks and it's unexpected. None of us when we did our before the season predictions or nobody in the entire NFL probably had the Ravens starting 0-2 unless like Lamar's hurt or something crazy. But none of that's really the case. We just didn't invest in the offensive line and Harbaugh's not making the best decisions. The secondary hasn't started as hot as we thought they would. There's a lot of variables going into these losses, but we are right there. It's not like this is some awful team that can't win games. So hopefully we get it back on track this Sunday. Hopefully we get Nate Wiggins back too. It kind of does worry me that Nate Wiggins is still not back at practice after that car accident, and I guess he has a neck injury from it. Harbaugh last week said it was pretty minor, but He's still not back at practice, so that's not a great sign that he's going to be playing this Sunday. And I honestly believe that he's a spark when we add him to that secondary. I mean, he's, his speed's undeniable. He's got playmaking ability. He plays with a ton of confidence. This is a first-round pick, man. First-round pick should be playing, you know what I mean? They should be involved. And obviously, the car accident aside, I'm not talking about that. I understand why he's out right now. I'm just saying we need Nate Wiggins in the lineup. We drafted him to play a role this year, and... Hopefully he's back soon. Dafe Owe also spoke to the media today. It does a lot for my confidence and, you know, moving forward. Um, and then for the team, too, they can rely on me, too, as well. So um, it definitely feels good. Uh, I know there's there's still, like, a bunch of more games to go. Uh, different, you know, challenges as well, how different teams are going to start playing, you know, now that they see, you know, some things with me and stuff. So 
I'm just, you know, ready for the next, you know, challenge. He's having an incredible start to the season. I mean, two and a half sacks in that Raiders game. He went crazy. You can see the evolution of his pass rush moves. Shout out to Chuck Smith. I definitely want him to stay around on the Ravens roster because I have seen the D-line, the edges playing so much better since we hired Chuck Smith. And there's not many pass rush gurus like Chuck Smith. I mean, the elite rushers were hiring Chuck Smith in the offseason to work with them individually. So the Ravens were just ahead of the game almost basically saying, okay, all these players are hiring this guy. Let's just bring him on to the coaching staff. And I think it's done wonders. I think Ajabo's playing incredible. Adafe always playing incredible. Travis Jones, Justin Matabike are playing incredible. Kyle Van Noy, Tavius Robinson. I mean, we were kind of concerned about our pass rush group and how thin it was going into the season. And now I feel like that's one of our strengths. We're only rushing four. We don't even have to blitz a lot. And the guys are getting home. We're putting pressure on quarterbacks. So this unit's doing really well. I think once the secondary starts locking in and gets their communication a little bit sharper, we tighten up our linebacker coverage across the middle of the field. Once all that starts to gel, our defense is going to be dominant. We're going to have a really good defense. And then obviously we got to figure out things on the offensive side of the ball with the offensive line and the run game and things like that. But I really trust that this defense will be fine. I think this defense is going to keep us in basically every game throughout this season. And I'm feeling good. I'm feeling better than I was as each day goes. I'm getting more excited for Dallas. We'll have a full game preview breakdown episode on Friday. Those are always like longer, more detailed episodes, have some highlights and just really dive into the specifics of the matchup. So look out for that. But that's it for today, guys. I appreciate you, as always, for tuning in to another episode of The Flock Rundown. Have a beautiful rest of your day, and I'll talk to you guys soon. Motionless brainwaves attempt to swim. They wear the sense, can't tame the untamed.